Live from Latham, New York, it's time for the Bill and Scott Cubicle Show from the world headquarters of WAJZ, Voorheesville. It's the Bill and Scott Cubicle Show, yeah, it's the Bill and Scott Cubicle Show, yeah. All right. Well, I'm not really sure 100% how that just worked out, but I hope it worked out as good as I think it did. I'm going to go back and listen to it a little bit later on. A little birdie. A big birdie. All right. The birds are out of the trap and they're in the cubicle. Birds Birds in the the cubicle. Birds. Oh, yeah. Oh, birds in, in the, the cubicle. cubicle. Birds, birds, birds in the cubicle. Yeah. Birds in the cubicle. Birds, birds in the cubicle. Yeah, that's a good segue. Let's talk about Nicki Minaj first because. because okay, first of that. all, I'm Scott. And I'm Bill. And this is The, the Bill, Bill and Scott, Scott Cubicle Show, Epi 42. So well, let's get into this Nicki Minaj real quick here. All right. So she <laughs> name dropped Seth Rogen in a song. She's featured on a new track by Fergie. It's called You Already Know. And the line goes thusly, I made a movie like Seth Rogue, and since I came in the game, they careers on death row. Come on, Nikki. You're yeah. better than that. Like, honestly, you're a way better rhymer than that half lazy bar. I think, personally, I think that Nicki Minaj is actually one of the better rappers in the game, at nice. least lyrically, um, at the moment. And I just think that's really weird. Do you think you could up her bar right there? <laughs> Bro. How would you make that line better? Here we go. Fear factor like Joe Rogue. Oh. I'm <laughs> evil like Supreme Leader Snoke. Yo. <laughs> Don't make me get all mad like a British bloke. Oh. Oh. Over the castle on the hill because I'm ready to kill. For real. Yo! Oh, I missed your left hand. There we go. Let's leave no man hanging. Okay, Bars. and no woman. But yeah, that's how you do it. That's how to you get write. your morning started. That's how you do a Rogan bar right there. Yeah, that okay. was tough though. Okay, so anyways, yeah. So Nicki Minaj talking about Seth. Uh, she should have dropped a John Mayer line. Then everybody been like, "Whoa, oh, yeah." And then that you. song would have skyrocketed up, and it would have been trending like crazy. And yeah, that's what Nicki needs to do. She needs a name drop. John Mayer in her next song. Get Yo, those trends up. She could have said, he wants to run through the halls of my hoo-ha. Can I say that on the cubicle show? Yeah. Okay. I think so. I just, good, because I just did. I said it. Yeah. Oh, All right. Oh, wait. This is live? Yeah. Oh. Live. Hi. Every every morning, Monday through Thursday, 1030. All right. Let's uh, talk about, we're going to get into Kanye as a British girl in just a <laughs> second <laughs> here. Is, so it's good. so good, but first we got to do this before gotta, we forget because we meant to bring this up team. yesterday, but Lil Cruzy verse. Yo, how did we miss that pun <laughs> the first day? And then we were going to talk about it yesterday. We just like completely <laughs> we forgot because we didn't write it down on our show. Ah. So Lil Cruzy verse. <laughs> triple XXO. XXO. Yeah, triple XO. Senator life. All, All right, right. This is part two of, of it. Of the Here's year. the update of it. So, hot, um, so, so I guess he's not going to fire the staffer that went in like the uh, – that that pornographic yeah. tweet and everything. Well, well, first of all, he said that it was a he, he wasn't on the account. It was a staffer who did it by accident. That's the update that we never got around to. And he says he's not going to fire said staffer. I guess they're not going to release who it was, which is a little shady. It makes you kind of think maybe maybe it wasn't a staffer. And here's my question to him: Why hasn't anybody in the media asked Cruzy Vert? <laughs> uh, <laughs> why haven't they asked him? Okay, so if a staffer accidentally liked that tweet, why are you following porn sites? Right. But well, then again, is it a big deal? Like, why are we even judging a grown man on porn? It all goes back to the, the scenario that I presented where I feel like it's the only, only way it could possibly happen by accident is if they got a follow or a notification from a porn bot, clicked on the page, and were like, oh, this isn't a real person. Oh, whoops, my finger slipped. I accidentally liked the tweet, and I didn't realize it. Oh, well, either that or it was some staffer who was forgot that they were on the Ted Cruz official account and was like, oh, yeah, porn. <laughs> that's like, that's yeah. those the only two. Yeah, which, that, la- that latter is not really that unrealistic, you know. And since we're talking about politics here, we're just going to go on. We got something to say about Clinton – and Trump here. Because we're going to be fair. Equal opportunity. You know, yeah. we're fair This and is balanced. nonpartisan. Yeah. So why don't you go ahead with your, your stuff. All right. So yesterday, last night, this is 
somewhat breaking news. Um, I was actually at the gym, walking on the treadmill when I was saw Dude, this thing he about. He changed yo. a lot, but at least he's got a red shirt on again. Thank you. So, <laughs> so there is some normal. It was thing. like Hillary Clinton interview with Anderson Cooper. So during this interview, Hillary Clinton said what she thinks about people who, and there's a lot of them who either voted for Donald Trump or just for whatever reason didn't vote for Hillary and now regret it because of the state of affairs in the country. And she said she does not forgive those people. The quote here, no absolution, but I just hope people will take what happened this time seriously and be ready and willing to vote the next time. Do you think that's a little, like, a little hard? I just, you know, without fully going into it and really... I don't think you don't even need to get political here. Yeah. You can just go from like a personal standpoint. But I think that she puts herself on a pedestal yeah. that she's really not on. Right. Like she possibly had the potential to be on that pedestal, but through prior actions and the way she's handled things has brought her down. And she still thinks she's here, but she's really there. Right. And I think like she's blinded. She she's got the wrong people in her corners. It's like I don't know, like you could say about a bunch of other people. I th- I just don't think she's like I still don't think she's grasped reality on what happened. Not only that, but to, to be like, oh, you made a mistake. I don't forgive you. Like that's the kind of thing that's gonna make people not want to vote for yeah. you. Well, I guess she's not running again, so she's not. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then uh, so allegedly at the White House, Donald Trump is having all these meetings on to tell people how to, you know spot a leak or how to prevent a leak from happening because all these leaks keep from coming from the white house so he's having these seminars and these meetings and everything well it was leaked that he's having these meetings about leaks right <laughs> i'm telling you trump can't escape this whole leaking stuff ever since those prostitutes in russia story came out <laughs> oh okay so now we gotta go up top again all right that's good oh, stuff God, man dude. the jokes are flowing just wow, like, <laughs> just oh, like oh, the bodily fluids oh no i didn't even plan that that just kind of oh, came God. out yeah we're so oh. good at this let's talk about <laughs> british girls being a kanye west <laughs> Well, or, gotta... or is it vice versa? Okay. So oh, this dude. God. All right, this guy. There's a play in the UK called Kanye the First. And it starts off with the death of Kanye West. And then Kanye is reincarnated in the body of a 27-year-old British woman named Annie. Now, I guess from reading like a little brief synopsis of this, it's not that he's reincarnated. So it's not Kanye West as a woman. It's like his persona starts taking over her body and it's like struggling for like, so, to maintain consciousness so she's like possessed by kanye yeah basically okay. yes this girl the possession is possessed of by kanye, kanye west now this guy who wrote this is not taking shots at kanye this is like a tribute he says he's a fan sam steiner is his name and he says i became really frustrated with how people were mocking him and implying that he deserved this in some way you know presumably after his mental breakdown last year to me it showed this growing empathy gap that people have when it comes to kanye west which is great. I, I, I agree with that. Like, he's, he's human, too. I yeah. feel like he deserves the same respect as anyone else. But how are you going to take that, say, people need to stop making fun of Kanye West, and then write a play where he becomes a British woman? Like, how do you think people are not going to make fun of that? The, the, like, that's just, like, that's leaving the floodgates open for it to happen. Yeah. It's like, just, it's so easy. There's so much low-hanging fruit. A million fruit. things you like, could say about it. And we pluck from the tree of low-hanging fruit pretty regularly Obviously, here. Like, we just, just did it for yeah. several solid minutes. But I'm not even going to touch that one because, I, like, I do agree. I think people need to lay off Kanye a little bit. Not to the leave Britney alone extent, but, I mean, you know, I, I respect Kanye for, what, for who he is. Listen, Kanye, has Kanye ever did anything really bad to hurt anybody at the end of the day? Other than being like arrogant and self centered and making great music, has he ever really hurt anybody? He made Taylor Swift's career what it is. That's the main thing people will cite when they're like, Oh yeah, but he took Taylor Swift's mic at the BMAs. Yeah. Well she became a huge star yeah. the next day. Mm-hmm. So, so when we've talked about that before, <laughs> you know, we've gone in on that. Listen, I, I will admit I am team Kanye. Same. But I do like Taylor Swift. I am. I like Taylor Swift's music for the most part. The new stuff. This is a great notebook that I have. Thank you, Stephanie. She's for real giving pretty. This to me. Don't get me wrong, but I and and I think she's talented. I just 
Yeah, as, as from what I know of her personally, 1989 was good. I don't know. 1989. I don't good. know about Reputation. So we'll far. see. We'll see what the other nine or eleven songs on the album are. What do you think? Do you think Taylor Swift's next album <coughs> should be ten songs, twelve or less, or like around fifteen? Like the next one after Reputation. No, Reputation. I think it's gonna be thirteen because that's like her favorite number. Or is she gonna buck that trend and make it like fifteen? The album comes out on the 10th, right? I want November her to do... 10th, so could she do 10 and 10? Uh, uh, it's 11, 10. 11, 9, 11, 10. 12, maybe 12. <laughs> <laughs> so I want her to do like a like a 10th anniversary edition of 1989 because we all know that's that's probably her peak, let's be real. Um, and I want it to have 1,989 tracks on it. So get writing, Taylor. No, thank there you. There we go. And then Low Game of Thrones, fruit. here we go. So Game of Thrones, uh, allegedly Excuse they're me. out there filming multiple endings. Yes. Okay, so this is to um, prevent spoilers. So the series, there's one more season left, <clears throat> season eight. This is not going to be coming out until late 2018 or early 2019. So now they're saying be, 2019? Yeah, yeah, early 2019 is, it could be possible. Like We're looking at a year and a half, potentially, till the next season the last, next and final season and so they're filming multiple endings so that nobody knows what the real ending is and i would assume that that you know like that the actors and the crew members don't know which one they're going to be using because they, right. they keep that stuff under tight wraps it was like what they did with the walking dead um before last season where they ended it with a cliffhanger so you know somebody died but you didn't know who and they filmed the death sequence for every major actor so that people would be thrown off so the internet detective still put together who it was going to be um, that was pretty impressive, but that's the kind of thing that they're trying to prevent. And with subject matter that is like the inspiration is unfinished. George R. R. Martin has not finished the books yet. It'd be a lot harder to predict. How hasn't he finished the books? Because he doesn't. I don't think he actually does anything on them. Like if if you were him and you're sitting on this fat pile of cash from the, that this TV show has made, yeah, would you really have any motivation to finish? Especially if they're they're going to finish the show without you, you could just be like, uh yeah, that that's what happens. Who wrote um, Harry Potter? <clears throat> J.K. Rowling. J.K., she finished up all her books. She finished up a whole bunch of stuff, and she continued on. Yeah, but, I mean, that was before the movies. Like, she finished the last book before the last movie came out. This, uh, guaranteed, the books are not going to be finished before the show's done. Uh, and if they are, then I will boil my shoe and make shoe soup. So after they do the original ending, right, and then it comes down to the time, and they put out... The season, whatever it is, season six or seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever it is of eight. Game of Thrones. Should they have a part on there where you can see all the alternate endings that they did yes. film? I think I think that would be a smooth idea for the uh, the DVD release. It'd be like, and alternate endings. Here are all the different possible. And then all the, the big fans can argue over which one is the best. I think that will make for a lot of discussion, a lot of buzz on the internet. I love arguing about stuff like that. I'm like, I'll sit and argue online all day. Or does well, this open up a way that could they do a live show and have an, an interactive thing through Twitter, or whatever, at that time to determine the actual ending of Game of Thrones? Oh, could so they, they, go a lane they like air that? multiple in a row and then have people be like, and vote for your favorite ending now. No, no, no. As <laughs> you're going on, like, you kind of are voting like, like How do you want like, the show like to you're, end? You're, you're picturing as you're coming up and you're in the last episode and you're seeing like how things are playing out and now you're starting to build in your mind how the show is going to end. Like, should they do a thing where you could do a hashtag like, you know, ending one, two, three, four, whatever you you, you tweet it out and then that could like. Well, then that would spoil all the endings at once. But they give you just a little summary that where it's not enough. It's just like. I don't like that idea. What I do like, actually, now that I think about it, it reminds me of, you ever seen the, the Clue movie? The movie based on the board game, Clue? No, I don't know. <clears throat> it's got, like, Tim Curry, he's the butler, and then some other people that I don't, I don't think it's Susan Sarandon might be in it. It's from either the 70s or the 80s, I think the okay. 80s. But what they did with that was they filmed it, and they released it in theaters, and it actually had three different endings. So you didn't know which ending you were going to get when you went to see it and you could go okay. see it at different times and get a different ending. And then it was like, finally when it came out on home video, they put all three endings back to back to back. And they were like, it could have happened like this or it could have happened like this, but it actually happened like this. So could they do that with game of Thrones? Like no, they, they ended come up to like, let, like right? a movie they, they, based they, on a board so game. So to keep it going, you come up, you get the last episode of the series, right? You uh -huh. have the, the one ending that they go with. And then since they're filming all these multiple endings, oh, hey, let's, let's get G dog's opinion right? on this because 
So oh, okay, he's busy. So we'll, we'll keep talking until he comes back here. We're going extended, so three minutes, extra <laughs> episode, free cubicle show. This is the last of the week, right? Yeah, this is the last one of the week. Um, so, so what if they they do it, then they start playing all the other endings afterwards? So the season ends, they give you the ending that it was, and now the next Sunday to keep viewers coming back and to keep that time spot, you know, Oh, they do relevant. the next They're different like, okay, ending. now find out what the other alternative ending one is. Then the next week later, See? they do alternative ending two when they do however they have. And then they can extend it out for like <coughs> they, another depending month Depending on how many like endings, because they haven't said how many they're doing. Dude, they could do like seven endings and have another full season of Game of Thrones and then, just of alternate endings. Right. And then fans could vote on their favorite one, and then that would make Be the official out. canon ending. Yeah. Yo, HBO, pay attention. Because people complain We're about how you... shows end all the time, <clears throat> yep. right? Yep. So this is a way to keep the chatter and the negativity down about the mm-hmm. show when it ends. Because yeah. when you have a show like Game of Thrones, people are not going to be happy with the ending. Right. Let's just be just real. Same like thing here. that happened with How I Met Your Mother. People freaking hated Sopranos it. and... Um, uh, there's a million... Uh, uh, Steinfeld. And, Steinfeld, yes. That was, and, yep, that was you know, there's, there's a bunch moment. of other ones that you could get into. So, I mean, that's what I would like to see, even though I am not a Game of Thrones fan. I don't know if... Don't and know G-Dog's if not, coming, yeah, coming, yeah, back. not coming back. Well, so. well, and will we wait for him to come back <coughs> this weekend on uh, Jams? Um, we It is a Netflix and Listen weekend. Ooh, so we're going to be task. hooking you up with Netflix gift cards and downloads from your favorite Jams artists. That's news to me. I didn't know that because you know what? <laughs> I didn't check my email yet today. So Well, I did, but I, I saw it sitting there and I was like, I don't need to know that yet. I'll, I'll read that later. So thank you. Yeah, so Netflix and Listen Weekend on Jams, getting you ready for cuffing season. Just get yourself that Cuffing bag. season. Oh, man. Oh, that'll be big talk coming yeah. in further episodes of the Bill and Scott Cubicle Show, which is Monday through Thursday, 1030 Eastern Time. Because it's the only time zone that matters. Also, Mac to School still going on. Get qualified weekdays for that brand new MacBook Pro. We give them away every single Friday afternoon. So you'll have another chance to get qualified with your boy right here. Actually, two more chances, and then IROC's got Ooh, another so... one later on, later on, and then more chances tomorrow morning and afternoon as guy. well. So get All your right. phone fingers ready for dialing. Include that 518 at the beginning. 518. Not 838, but nope. 518. Welcome to the 8. The All right. Eight. Okay. Bye. (laughs) See you next week. One. Cubicle show. Cubicle show. Cubicle show. Cubicle show! That's what I'm talking about, boy! Bill and Scott Cubicle show. Yeah? Bill and Scott Cubicle show. Yeah! Bill and Scott, Bill and Scott Cubicle show. It's the Bill and Scott, Bill and Scott Cubicle show. It's the Bill and Scott, Bill and Scott Cubicle show. It's the Bill and Scott, Bill and Scott Cubicle show. Cubicle show. Cubicle show. Cubicle show. Cubicle show. Not a rectangle show. Not a triangle show. Not a pyramid show. It's a cubicle show. Bill and Scott Cubicle show. Yeah. Bill and Scott Cubicle show. Yeah. Cubicle show. Boy! <laughs>